Hey, I'm here with Martin Schmidt from uh, Germany, and he wrote the book on surf guitar, literally. Uh, two volumes. The first volume came out a while back. Second volume is coming out exactly next week. So, Martin, welcome to the show. Hello. Nice to be back. I'm so excited that you reached out to me. Uh, when somebody wants to come back to talk the second time, that that really makes me feel good. So thank you. Yeah, it was fun the first time, and I hope it's going to be fun the second time, too. Yeah, me too. Me too. So first, let's talk about volume two of the Surf Guitar book. Um, and, and It looks like this. That's Here it awesome. Is. So, so tell me why why a volume two? So um, the first book went really well, and there was a lot of interest in it. So I was very happy about that. And then I thought maybe I have a few more things to tell about surf guitar, and that's what I tried to do in the second book. So there are chapters about songwriting, arranging, and how to practice guitar playing with surf songs. And also there are 30 more surf songs with play along tracks and backing tracks written in tap and notation. So I think it's 200 pages. So you have a lot of stuff to work on. So um, how, the songs you have in, in the book, like, are, are how are they transcribed? I transcribe them myself. I listen to the records or an mp3 whatever it is these days and then i write down the yeah the notes that the guitar plays and then i put it in tap and notation so oh, it's excellent. for people who can read music in the traditional way and it's also for people who can't read music in a traditional way but can read the tap so oh excellent that's a great idea yeah most guitar books these days are like that because guitar players are very lazy <laughs> when you to read music <laughs> yeah 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 me being one I, I understand that completely um so what is it about surf guitar that's interesting and specific to this second book i think uh i try to show ways how to expand the traditional way of playing surf guitar a bit I analyze a few of my compositions that uh, try to mix certain styles. I'm a big punk rock fan and reggae and ska fan, so I try to put these influences in surf music. And uh, I also like to arrange yeah, well-known songs into a surf music kind of arrangement, and I explain the way I do it. There are certain techniques and I show some of, some of my songs, what I did in them, how I made them sound the way they sound. Oh, awesome. Could you give me a few examples of techniques without giving too much away? <laughs> yeah, well, um, in the first book, there were all, all these classic surf guitar techniques like double picking and playing the melody with chords. And in the second book, I just take some arrangements that we recorded with the razor blades, for example, the Godfather theme, and then I show how I, uh, yeah, make the melody sound different. So sometimes I play it on the low strings, then I play it on the high oh, yeah. string, then I play it with chords, then I play little fills in between the mm -hmm. melody, or combine, yeah, all all these things at once. Because if you play instrumental music. If you play the same melody the same way five times in a row, it sounds a bit boring. Yeah. But yeah. if you change the way you play it, at first it's very low and twangy, and then suddenly you have some high sounding chords along with it, then it sounds more interesting. Exactly. Uh, and, and a perfect example of that is if you look on YouTube, you can see a great example of that by the the veins uh slack tone. Yeah, uh, they do a version of Miserlu that is incredible. Um, the layering and the the filling, like you said, you know, you play it different a couple every time through. Um, what are some like? Do you 
do you try to layer in different genres to make it a little bit more flavorful? Is that what your your approach is? Yeah, but uh, I'm not really thinking about uh, putting these different genres in. It's more the way I like to compose and play music. I don't want to limit myself to exactly one style of music. I like a lot of different music. I listen to punk rock. I listen to classic rock. I listen to jazz or some. Lately, I, li I like uh, a lot of Tex-Mex stuff like Calexico and uh, yeah. So uh, all these things are in my head and I listen to it and then I write a song and some of these things come out. Okay. It's not that I think, oh, today I will have surf music with punk rock and some folk in the background. It's just, I play something and all these things yeah. are in it because they're part of my repertoire and my listening yeah. experience. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, so I saw a post on your, your Facebook page about the book um teasing there's a little surprise that comes with it is that correct yes for the first uh 100 orders there's a cd that uh, comes along with the book for free it's a cd that i recorded in 2006 with dusty watson from slackdown and dick dale so it's called adventures in the land of twang and we are yeah we are Try, we are playing our way to through different genres. We have rock, punk, surf, even some lounge style music with lap steel, country. So it's quite interesting to hear Dusty play all these styles and I try yeah. to do my best to play along with him. I, I love Dusty's style because a lot of it has to do with him watching the players, the guitar players, the rhythm section. Um, it, it's really a, it, it, it's really a symbiotic thing between, uh, while playing with him. Did you record those sessions live? Yes, uh, he came to Germany for a few days. And then I think we recorded 22 songs in two and a half days. So, <laughs> wow. But they were all worked out before and yet had, had some demo recordings and listened to them. And then we just played each song a few times until the drum track was perfect. And then I added all the other instruments myself afterwards. Wow. Wow. So let's take a couple steps back and talk about what inspired you to write the first volume of the surf guitar book. Okay. Uh, I think for most musical styles, there are, a lot of books that explain properly how it works, but for surf music, there was basically nothing except from a few transcriptions of Dick Dale or some yeah, 60s hits. So I thought it would be interesting to analyze the surf music style and just explain the different things that happen in it. So you have like some typical playing techniques like the Dick Dale style double picking or the Duane Eddy twang stuff and also some yeah some muted picking that sounds very percussive uh, and I made like little chapters for each technique with some exercises and showed the way they work properly and then I had had 20 songs in the book where all these techniques techniques are happening in the song excellent excellent um one of the things um I noticed and you can tell uh, by watching a guitar player, some when they mute or they pick, you know, it, it's all in the wrist, and others strum and it's in the elbow. Is there a proper balance between the two? Uh, when I do double picking, I do it more from the elbow, like this. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if I do other techniques, a lot of it comes from the wrist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Under, understood understood so but i thought that i've seen guitar players they do it the other way around than i do it and they also sound fine so i think it's mostly of finding a way that is good for you and if it works then it works i i, I think maybe for a band on tour it's more of an endurance thing you know like the muscle like the muscles you know yeah um so let's take even a, a further step back and give me your history. 
for those who haven't seen the first interview, which is awesome, give me a little bit of history about how you first learned about surf music and what was it about it that stuck out as a guitar player that said, oh, I, I want to learn how to do that or I can do that. Okay, I first heard about surf music when I was the support act for a German band in the late 80s. The band was called Fenton Wells. And one of their songs is in the new book because they inspired me. It wasn't a real surf band. They played more like movie themes. And uh, they did Peter Gunn and Hawaii Five O, some Link Ray stuff, but they had like these twangy 60s guitar style. And I had no idea what it was called, but I really liked it. And after this concert that we played together, I tried to write some stuff in this style. I wasn't a very yeah, advanced guitarist at this point because I was just like 18 years old. But I did a few songs that sounded like this and I really liked to play instrumental stuff. And then I kind of forgot about this kind of music for maybe the next 10 years because I was studying music at a jazz school, trying to play jazz guitar and yeah, learning all the basic elements of music. Uh, and then I read something in the Guitar Player magazine about the CD from a band called Slacktone. Ah. And it said, oh, this band mixes surf music with jazz, punk, rock and everything else. And they're great players. I thought, okay, that sounds interesting. I ordered the CD and listened to it a few times and so oh, I really like it. And then I basically listened to it every day for the next six months or something like that. And then I thought, okay, I'd like to do this kind of music again. And that's what I did. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So um, one okay. thing I have to mention, the, the great thing after I had this CD, I saw that the band was coming to Germany, but not uh, with Slacktone. I think they were the, the backing band for John and the Knight Riders. Oh, yeah, so I went yeah. to the concert and I talked to, to Dave and he was a really nice guy and he gave me another Slacktone CD. So, uh, yeah, we immediately became friends and we've stayed in touch ever since. I just saw him a few weeks ago in Italy at the Surfer Joe Festival and it was great yeah. to see him again. I saw some of Dave Ronsky's, I believe it was at Surfer Joe, where he does a little seminar about how he gets some of his mm -hmm. unusual tones and, and techniques and uh he's quite innovative and inventive as well you know it, it's pretty impressive like that he hears it in his head he can figure out how to make that machine do the job yeah so so tell me a little bit about some of the great amps i can't i i can't leave the interview without talking about some of the amps behind you oh uh, yeah i have quite a few amps uh, my main amps are vintage fender amps uh, maybe i can go to the side so there's a basement amp that's my main live and recording amp but i also uh, uh, do some work for a german amp company the tube amp doctor and the red amp and the one on top they're from this company they try to build uh, amps that are basically based on the classic amplifiers. They have Marshall style amps and Fender style amps. And basically these two, two sorts of amps are what I use. I like Fender amps, but I sometimes to get it a, get a little more dirt or a little more attacked, I add some Marshall amps. And yeah, I like the combination of both. Awesome, awesome. I. Uh... I was in a, a thrash metal band in high school and I yeah. used, I used, um, they were really cheap distortion pedals, but I used a basement and that really made a difference when you're playing in like a metal band. Um, as far as surf goes, how do you feel that that, uh, affects your tone? I think you can get a good surf tone with a lot of different tools. I mean, I've seen people playing some very strange amps and you think, okay, that's what he's playing. And then you, you hear the guy playing and you think, okay, it sounds pretty good. So I think a lot of it's in your 
personal touch to the instrument. Oh. But it's, if you have a classic tube amp like an old Fender, it's basically 50% of the sound. You can't do much wrong with an old Fender amp. Mm -hmm. They all sound nice, no matter if it's a big one like the Showman or the Basement or a very small one like a Princeton. They all deliver a good tone. What do you, as far as uh, reverb goes, what is your studio preference for a unit as opposed to your performing live preference? Mm -hmm. In the studio, I mainly use a vintage Fender tank from 1962 that I bought like 20 years ago. I still haven't found anything that beats it recording wise. Uh, but for the live shows, it's too much hassle and yeah, it's too dangerous to carry the old thing around. It also runs on 110 volt, and in Germany we have 220, so you need a transformer. Uh, so I just play through a pedal. Most of the time I use a Catalin Brett Topanga, but I also have a Surfy Bear Compact that I like to use. And with these two pedals, I can uh, get very nice reverb sound for the live shows. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I want everybody to know they can go. To, uh, the link will be in the description to the surf, uh, the surfguitarbook.com, and there you can get um, uh, volume one and volume two. And the first one that orders uh, volume two will get the CD um, yes. with Martin Schmidt and uh, Dusty Watson on it. And uh, which I'm very excited about, and uh, look for a review coming up from the books on our channel. Uh, Martin Schmidt, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, that I may have not mentioned or asked about? Well, I can recommend to check out my band, The Razor Bates. Here's our latest record, it's already four years old, but we're working on a new one. Maybe next year we'll get it ready. And it would be great to see a lot of people at our live shows in the fall, where we do a tour in Germany. Next year, we're going probably back to the UK and around Germany again. So it would be good to see a lot of people at these shows. It, yeah, excellent. Excellent. Uh, the Razor Blades, what type of music is that? Rockabilly? No, it's a surf. Now we call it surf punk it's because it. It's a lot more high energy than classic surf, but most of it is instrumental. I play a jazz master and a jaguar with a surfy tone. So it's good for all the surf music fans out there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Martin. I was really looking forward to this. Um, probably my most anticipated for me interview for this season. And, uh, I'm very happy for you that your book is coming out. I know it's going to be well received because there are a lot of people starting up surfing. So um, that's yeah. good. Congratulations. We're looking forward to the next surf revival. <laughs> hopefully uh, it's going to come next year. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, you have a great uh, rest of your day. Uh, I know it's a little later there in Germany, but uh I appreciate you coming on and, and thanks so much for being such a cool dude.